Hi, Group A. So the first piece of the writing process is pre-writing. And pre-writing is really just getting all of that information that you gathered from your research and creating an organized kind of structure to start really developing your paper. So we are going to do an outline for our pre-writing. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a copy of this Google Doc. So go to File, Make a Copy. You're going to title it <clears throat> your name. And make sure you, you put it in your language folder. Then you're going to add your name here. You're going to add my name here. And then the date, day, month, year. You're also going to put your last name in the upper right-hand corner. And it is going to be in the header. And there's a page number that automatically is going to change every time um, there is a new page. So this is just the MLA format that we're going to use. Don't worry about a title right now. That's going to come kind of later on in the process. So we're just going to start by really diving into our introduction. And our introduction starts with a hook. A hook is the first sentence or the opening statement of your introductory paragraph. And it's meant to really grab your reader's attention. If you think about fishing, you're baiting the hook, hoping to catch a fish's attention. And you're doing the same thing here just with words and with a reader. So this can be done in several, um, several different ways. You can use a quote from maybe an important figure you can use data or um, a statistic that was really powerful from your research, or you could do an anecdote, which is just a short story, or even a couple lines from the poem that you created, or if it's a poem that you found that's really powerful, you could use that as well. So when you think about the elements of persuasion, um, having a quote from an important person would be ethos that would appeal to uh, your credibility and establishing that. A statistic or fact would be logos, and then an anecdote or story might appeal to somebody's emotions. So um, if you look at my example, this is my hook. It says, Mother Teresa expressed the complexity of caring for the poor when she said, the hunger for love is so much more difficult to remove than the hunger for bread. Notice that I do have the in-text citation here because those are not my words. Those are Mother Teresa's words. So it'll be important that you um, use a citation if you're borrowing any information from a source. And I actually wanna um, show you that source so this is how I found that quote. If you are interested in um, looking up a famous quote, all you would have to do is like quotes on poverty. So if you just type in a Google search, they're going to give you lots of pictures. I, have, I want you to avoid using the images because they don't give you a full um, source. But notice that they give you um, like Goodreads, brainy quote. They're going to give you lots of sources and then you can cite this website um, just like I did if you want to use that. So you use the title of the website. Mine was famous quotes about poetry. Use the publisher and if there's a date, if there's no date, you'd put n period d period the URL and then the day you accessed it. So accessed day, month, and year. So again, um, I chose to use a really powerful quote in my hook, but you can choose a statistic, you can choose um, some lines from poetry, or um, anything else that you're, you're just going to think is really going to grab your reader's attention. It's just important that if this does not come from you, that you cite it appropriately, and I can help you do that. Okay, so after you have your hook, the next piece is just a basic definition or very general background information on your topic. So what is the definition of your social or environmental issue? If you can um, really just to write it um, very generally speaking, you do not need to cite a source here. 
But if you do use a definition from one of your sources, again, you do need to cite that. And then why is it important? Um, make sure that you write why this is a really prevalent issue. Um, do not use personal pronouns. So we are avoiding I, you, we, things like that um, in here. So try to keep it uh, without those personal pronouns. If in your first draft, in your pre-writing, you have those, that's fine. We can work on that in the revision process. And then again, just gen any general information that you think is important just to have an introduction to this topic. You're not going deep. You're just introducing this topic to your reader. So again, avoid using information from your sources because you don't want to go into a lot of depth here in the introduction unless it's necessary for the definition or things like that. Okay, so basic background information. I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, so this kind of chunk is just basic background. And I say opening up to the poverty in your neighborhood helps humanize the issue, whether it's a ride to work, a leaky roof, an unpaid bill, or the ongoing struggle of keeping a steady job. Poverty leaves families living with daily uncertainty and fear. Individuals, churches, nonprofit organizations, and our government have devoted time, money, and resources to combating poverty in America. With poverty constantly present in our communities, schools, and streets, what is the most effective way to address the issue? That's my basic background information. Notice I didn't cite any of my sources in that chunk. It's just my introduction. Okay, all of that information is from me. And then the last part is the most important piece of your paper. If you could boil your entire paper down to one sentence, that would be your thesis. So a thesis statement is just that, exactly that, one sentence that expresses the main points of your paper. And I'm actually going to uh, jump down to this last bullet point, which is an example, and I want you to use this word for word. So you don't have to cite me, but you're welcome. I'm giving you your thesis. So you're going to say understanding the history, current events, and laws, division, and local impact of your, you're going to type in whether that's racism or minimum wage, um, your issue can lead to healing and unity. And notice that I have color-coded these topics because these are going to then be the main points of each of your body paragraphs, and they go in order. So the first thing you mention in your thesis is the history. Guess what? That's going to be your first body paragraph. The next point you make in your thesis is the current events and issues. That's your second body paragraph. Your opposing viewpoint and division is your third body par paragraph. Uh, local impact is your fourth. And your fifth body paragraph is the last point you make in your thesis statement, and that is healing and unity. So you have your thesis already written out for you. All you need to do here is just add that social or environmental issue, like your specific Topic that you're addressing in that underlying space. So go ahead and write your introductory paragraph. Let me know if you have any questions.